Well, hey kids, welcome back to Smith Motor Works. On this episode, we're going to talk about a little tool that you may or may not have seen before. This is a fin comb or a condenser fin comb, or you'll sometimes see, see it called a radiator fin comb. And that's really what I want to talk about. Is it worth having or not? Let's find out. Okay, well this, this is one of two places where you'd, you'd want this thing to be useful, and uh, unfortunately it is not. Um, let me show you, it, it's, it's just got like a screwdriver handle, and it's, you know, bolted to the end like a wheel is these uh, plastic rows of straightening combs on here, and they've got a number on them, which is really just kind of arbitrary. I, I suppose that maybe some things are specced with the, the number and you can look that up and and use the appropriate number, but it's really just finding the one that fits your fits your pattern, fit your interval and and um and you're pretty much towing it down into the this would be like the starting edge here up at towards the center. So laying it down into that and and pushing it along it. And uh yeah, of course I'm going the wrong way here because there ain't no way it's going to work on this transmission cooler and if you can see these um the fins on this um are kind of what it what this tool needs to work save for the fact that they are not straight they are all uh, in a, a zigzag pattern and uh this if you could even get it to start um you just bend the tar out of them so um you're you're kind of reduced to doing it the old-fashioned way and kind of gently tweaking these back into the right shape um, what I love to use for this job I've got a pair of duckbill pliers and the the width of uh, the duckbill is almost exactly the width of these uh, uh, bins in here and I'll, I'll put that in there and just kind of gently smash it back into shape um, and I'll tell you <clears throat> if you're going to do that which I suggest that you do because, you know, every, everywhere you've got these bent up, you know, you're not just restricting airflow through there. You're creating a hot spot. So you're turning it into a little heater, um, doing the exact opposite of what, what you want the, the cooler radiator um, to do is, uh, you know, reject the heat. Well, it's, it's absorbing it right in that spot. And so you're, you're heating it back up for a second or two as it's passing through there. So, so straighten it out. Um, this, this is off... My star fire that we've got over in the corner and the previous owner you know kind of beat it up a little bit and uh including this this nice aluminum radiator that's in there a um, little, little more beat up on the other side but you can see it's got some damage here too um well can you use can you use this fancy tool on this well you, you get even worse here now because there's nothing above the surface for this to kind of lay into uh and you got not only are the fins um kind of flush with the uh, uh, the core of the radiator going across uh, they're going up and down and they're they're too short to even get it started so you're just gonna just tear this radiator up way worse um, trying to use that so back to their duckbill pliers again um, again treat this like you're repairing an eggshell or something it's really easy to to nick some of this stuff and you end up knocking a hole in it instead of you know, opening, opening that cooling or that uh, air, pa air passage through there. So that we're we'll strike, strike two so far. Um, can, should we keep going? Yeah. Let's, let's check out something else. All right. I got the radiator grill off the back of our 1950 tow motor fork truck here. Um, it's got a pretty cool little plate on the back says tow motor on it, but, um, the radiator, um, you know these these things are, live a rough life, and uh, you know if you're interested in this kind of stuff, we're, we're slowly trying to trying to clean this up, make it a little nicer, and uh, it's definitely featured on Channel Two if you want to check it out. But this is 1950, and uh, radiator construction has, has changed a little bit, and uh, you can see the fins do come out past the core passages here. This this is really kind of what this tool needs to work, uh, and I have used it on here. Um, the tin, the you know they're marked with numbers on here. 
the number 10 on there seems to fit into that and you can kind of drag it across there but um, basically all I'm doing is in the, the the straight spots with paint I'm rubbing the paint off of that and that works pretty good but if you get to a spot where it's kind of bent up it catches one of the fins and it just kind of rolls it over so I I really stopped using it but it did it did take out some of the really wanky you know jacked up stuff in there um, but what I'll probably end up doing is 3d printing because um, I think that 10 even though it fits it's really not the right interval for this so it it doesn't work consistently or these things are inconsistent enough it it can't make a pass all the way across all the way down <clears throat> so I think I'm just gonna print like my own single tooth little tool here and use that and just carefully go back and forth and it'll, it'll only take about a hundred hours to go around through there uh, if I'm lucky but um, so strike three yeah yeah it's still maybe, maybe not a full-on strike but definitely not a hit so what do, what do we do let's keep looking okay now we're peering through the grill opening of our 1958 Goliath Express 1100 front wheel drive minivan straight from the fatherland Germany um, it's also featured on the channel. If you want to check it out? We've done a done a little bit of exploration with it. Haven't done a whole lot of work with it yet, but it's uh it's water cooled front wheel drive, and you can see the radiator poking through these slots in here. It's a lot like the old tow motor radiator. Um, this thing is uh, really really uncommon, and I'm probably not going to experiment with this. So so what do you do? Um, well, in the beginning, I told you it was a fin comb or a condenser fin comb, or I've seen it sold as a radiator fin comb. Well, I would say there may be a radiator out there on this planet that you can use it on. I haven't found one yet. It won't work on my 60 Studebaker. It won't work on my 58 Goliath. Um, it does work on my 60 Corvair. Actually, no, it doesn't because it doesn't have a radiator not going to work on any of my other GMs that I have. Uh, I, I don't really think I got anything right now that'll work on it. But uh, you can take that radiator out of that description and you go back to the condenser part. That's really what it's made for. This is more for um, HVAC service guys. Um, and, and what I mean is, you know, commercial stuff like, a, you know, heat bump or, a, you know, refrigeration unit. Um, they... They use these. These will work. I've seen them demoed. You know, they rip, rip right on through there and straighten them out because those fins come out farther, and I think they're built at the intervals that this tool works on. Now, why did this get lumped into being an automotive tool? Because I don't have that many cars with functioning air conditioning, but I bet the condenser in those cars will benefit from this tool haven't tried it but i think that's where it might might be useful to you so again you know i keep one around i might need it for for some project um this was only like five bucks for two so but i would say if you want one spend the 10 15 bucks and get a get a lyle or get a get a brand name one um i i don't know if you know there'd be some other little radiators on things on small water-cooled stuff that might work that way. The the radiator on my Kawasaki Drifter motorcycle, which is water-cooled, it it's like just like a baby um, modern car radiator. It kind of looks like a heater core almost. So, um, yeah, I hate to say it. Um, not really a good place to spend your money if you're trying to speed up your radiator bin straightening repairs. You're, you're stuck with... Uh, you know, carefully sliding them back into place, but um, you know, just don't don't bash your radiator up, and you'll never have to do that. Well, hey, I hope you found that information useful. It's something that uh, I wasn't really aware of when I got one. I thought I'd give it a shot. Like I say, it's it's cheap enough. If you find one, get a good one. Throw in your toolbox and it may come in handy if you if you like to collect tools like I do. But uh, if
if you think it's going to uh, have a lot of use in your uh, automotive uh, your vehicular repairs, it's probably not, not going to be something that you go to very often. I got it tucked away. I think these are two for one in the bottom. Like I said, this is a copy of a, a Lyle unit, which is a much better tool. So if you get um, something that's not a copy of the original, get it from a you know, industrial live nation like you know U.S., Germany, Japan, something like that, where, where they're making quality tools. Uh, go to that wrap, you know, if you think you're going to use it. Uh, this is an experiment for me. I've gotten so close to throwing this thing away so many times, I can't count. But now you know. So hope you, hopefully that helped you out. If you liked it, please do your homework. Like, subscribe, share. Check out some of our other stuff. As you can see, we got a lot of things going in the shop here. Um, and we've made videos on about everything we talked about. So check them out. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching on Smith Motorworks.